strange case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde is a gothic novella by Scottish author Robert Louis Stevenson, first published in 1886. The work is also known as The Strange Case of Jekyll Hyde, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, or simply Jekyll and Hyde. It is about a London legal practitioner named Gabriel John Utterson who investigates strange occurrences between his old friend, Dr. Henry Jekyll, and the evil Edward Hyde. The novel's impact is such that it has become a part of the language, with the phrase Jekyll and Hyde entering the vernacular to refer to people with an unpredictably dual nature, usually very good, but sometimes shockingly evil. William Henry Hudson, born 4 August 1841, died 18 August 1922, was an English Argentine author, naturalist, and ornithologist. A Crystal Age is a utopian novel slash dystopia written by Hudson, first published in 1887. The book has been called a significant science fiction milestone, and has been noted for its anticipation of the modern ecological mysticism that would evolve a century later. The book was first issued anonymously in 1887. The second edition of 1906 identified the author by name, and included a preface by Hudson. The third edition of 1916 added a foreword by Clifford Smith. Looking backward, 2000, 1887 is a utopian novel by Edward Bellamy, a journalist and writer from Chicopee Falls, Massachusetts. It was first published in 1888. It was the third largest bestseller of its time, after Uncle Tom's Cabin and Ben-Hur, A Tale of the Christ. It influenced a large number of intellectuals, and appears by title in many socialist writings of the day. It is one of the few books ever published that created almost immediately on its appearance a political mass movement. In the United States alone, over 162 Bellamy clubs sprang up to discuss and propagate the book's ideas. Owing to its commitment to the nationalization of private property and the desire to avoid use of the term socialism, this political movement came to be known as nationalism, with a capital N, not to be confused with the political concept of nationalism. The novel also inspired several utopian communities. A Connecticut Yankee in King Arthur's Court is an 1889 novel by American humorist and writer Mark Twain. The book was originally titled A Yankee in King Arthur's Court. Some early editions are titled A Yankee at the Court of King Arthur. In the book, a Yankee engineer from Connecticut named Hank Morgan receives a severe blow to the head and is somehow transported in time and space to England during the reign of King Arthur. After some initial confusion and his capture by one of Arthur's knights, Hank realizes that he is actually in the past, and he uses his knowledge to make people believe that he is a powerful magician. He attempts to modernize the past in order to make people's lives better, but in the end he is unable to prevent the death of Arthur and an interdict against him by the Catholic Church of the time, which grows fearful of his power. Twain wrote the book as a burlesque of romantic notions of chivalry after being inspired by a dream in which he was a knight himself, severely inconvenienced by the weight and cumbersome nature of his armor. It is a satire of feudalism and monarchy that also celebrates homespun ingenuity and democratic values while questioning the ideals of capitalism and outcomes of the Industrial Revolution. It is among several works by Twain and his contemporaries that mark the transition from the Gilded Age to the progressive era of socio-economic discourse. News from Nowhere, 1890, is a classic work combining utopian socialism and soft science fiction written by the English artist, designer and socialist pioneer William Morris. It was first published in serial form in the Commonweal Journal beginning on 11th January 1890. In the novel, the narrator, William Guest, falls asleep after returning from a meeting of the Socialist League and awakes to find himself in a future society based on common ownership and democratic control of the means of production. In this society there is no private property, no big cities, no authority, no monetary system, no divorce, no courts, no prisons, and no class systems. This agrarian society functions simply because the people find pleasure in nature, and therefore they find pleasure in their work. The novel explores a number of aspects of this society, including its organization and the relationships which it engenders between people. Morris fuses Marxism and the Romance tradition when he presents himself as an enchanted figure in a time and place different from Victorian England. As Morris, the romance character, quests for love and fellowship, and through them for a reborn self, he encounters romance archetypes in Marxist guises. Old Hammond is both the communist educator who teaches Morris the new world and the wise old man of romance. 
Dick and Clary are good comrades and the married lovers who aid Morris in his wanderings. The journey on the Thames is both a voyage through society transformed by revolution and a quest for happiness. The goal of the quest, met and found though only transiently, is Ellen, the symbol of the reborn age and the bride the alien cannot win. Ellen herself is a multi-dimensional figure, a working class woman emancipated under socialism. She is also a benign nature spirit as well as the soul in the form of a woman. The book offers Morris answers to a number of frequent objections to socialism and underlines his belief that socialism will entail not only the abolishment of private property but also of the divisions between art, life, and work. In the novel, Morris tackles one of the most common criticisms of socialism, the supposed lack of incentive to work in a communistic society. Morris' response is that all work should be creative and pleasurable. This differs from the majority of socialist thinkers, who tend to assume that while work is a necessary evil, a well-planned equal society can reduce the amount of work needed to be done by each worker. News from Nowhere was written as a libertarian socialist response to an earlier book called Looking Backward, a book that epitomizes a kind of state socialism that Morris abhorred. It was also meant to directly influence various currents of thought at the time regarding the tactics to bring about socialism. Herbert George Wells, born 21st September 1866, died 13th August 1946, was an English writer. He was prolific in many genres, writing dozens of novels, short stories, and works of social commentary, satire, biography, and autobiography, and even including two books on recreational war games. He is now best remembered for his science fiction novels and is often called the father of science fiction along with Jules Verne and Hugo Gernsback. The Time Machine is a science fiction novella by Wells, published in 1895 and written as a frame narrative. The work is generally credited with the popularization of the concept of time travel by using a vehicle that allows an operator to travel purposely and selectively forwards or backwards in time. The term time machine, coined by Wells, is now almost universally used to refer to such a vehicle. The time machine has been adapted into three feature films of the same name, as well as two television versions, and a large number of comic book adaptations. It has also indirectly inspired many more works of fiction in many media productions. Wells' The Island of Dr. Moreau is an 1896 science fiction novel. The text of the novel is the narration of Edward Prendick, a shipwrecked man rescued by a passing boat who is left on the island home of Dr. Moreau, a mad scientist who creates human-like hybrid beings from animals by vivisection. The novel deals with a number of philosophical themes, including pain and cruelty, moral responsibility, human identity, and human interference with nature. Wells described it as an exercise in youthful blasphemy. The Island of Dr. Moreau is a classic of early science fiction and remains one of Wells' best-known books. The novel is the earliest depiction of the science fiction motif uplift, in which a more advanced race intervenes in the evolution of an animal species to bring the latter to a higher level of intelligence. It has been adapted to film and other media on many occasions, with Charles Lawton, 1933, Burt Lancaster, 1977, and Marlon Brando, 1996, as the Mad Doctor. His The War of the World is a science fiction novel, first serialized in 1897 by Pearson's Magazine in the UK, and by Cosmopolitan Magazine in the US. The novel's first appearance in hardcover was in 1898 from publisher William Hyman of London. Written between 1895 and 1897, it is one of the earliest stories to detail a conflict between mankind and an extraterrestrial race. The novel is the first-person narrative of both an unnamed protagonist in Surrey and of his younger brother in London as southern England is invaded by Martians. The novel is one of the most commented on works in the science fiction canon. The plot has been related to invasion literature of the time. The novel has been variously interpreted as a commentary on evolutionary theory, British imperialism, and generally Victorian superstitions, fears, and prejudices. Wells said that the plot arose from a discussion with his brother Frank about the catastrophic impact of the British on indigenous Tasmanians. What would happen, he wondered, if Martians did to Britain what the British had done to the Tasmanians. The Tasmanians however lacked the lethal pathogens to defeat their invaders. At the time of publication, it was classified as a scientific romance, like Wells's earlier novel The Time Machine. 
The War of the Worlds has been both popular, having never been out of print, and influential, spawning half a dozen feature films, radio dramas, a record album, various comic book adaptations, a television series, and sequels or parallel stories by other authors. It was most memorably dramatized in a 1938 radio program that allegedly caused public panic among listeners who did not know the Martian invasion was fictional. The novel has even influenced the work of scientists, notably Robert H. Goddard, who, inspired by the book, invented both the liquid-fueled rocket and multi-stage rocket, which resulted in the Apollo 11 moon landing 71 years later. The First Men in the Moon is a scientific romance by Wells, originally serialized in the Strand magazine from December 1900 to August 1901 and published in hardcover in 1901, who called it one of his fantastic stories. The novel tells the story of the journey to the moon undertaken by the two protagonists, a businessman narrator, Mr. Bedford, and an eccentric scientist, Mr. Cover. Bedford and Cover discover that the moon is inhabited by a sophisticated extraterrestrial civilization of insect-like creatures they call Selenites. Is the World Set Free is a novel written in 1913 and published in 1914. The book is based on the prediction of a more destructive and uncontrollable sort of weapon than the world has yet seen. It had appeared first in serialized form with a different ending as a prophetic trilogy, consisting of three books. A Trap to Catch the Sun, The Last War in the World and The World Set Free. Wells Men Like Gods, 1923, is a novel referred to by the author as a scientific fantasy. It features a utopia located in a parallel universe. The Invisible Man is an American 1933 pre-code science fiction horror film directed by James Whale. It was based on H.G. Wells' science fiction novel The Invisible Man, published in 1897, as adapted by R.C. Sheriff, Philip Wiley and Preston Sturges, whose work was considered unsatisfactory and who was taken off the project. Produced by Universal, the film stars Claude Rains in his first American screen appearance, and Gloria Stewart. The film has been described as a nearly perfect translation of the spirit of the book, it spawned a number of sequels, plus many spin-offs using the idea of an invisible man that were largely unrelated to Wells' original story. Reigns portrayed the invisible man, Dr. Jack Griffith, mostly only as a disembodied voice. Reigns is only shown clearly for a brief time at the end of the film, spending most of his on-screen time covered by bandages. In 2008 The Invisible Man was selected for preservation in the United States National Film Registry by the Library of Congress as being culturally, historically, or aesthetically significant. Rational minds prevail, but not for long as we'll discover in the next episode. See you then.